I'm reminding you how much you're truly loved. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> so from that incredibly powerful, deeply joyous thing, we've got to talk about some other stuff today. <laughs> how do you handle toxic overload at this point? I mean, really. I know, right? So my first, I have a bunch of questions to ask you, but my first one is, so how's it going with all of you right now? Huh? Have, are we still in our skins and in our minds and holding on to what is dear and true and real? Or are we still reading the newspapers every day, listening, watching the news? Are you finding yourself adding apps to your phone like the New York Times or CNN or other news apps? Do you have to know what is happening at every moment anymore? Is what you're reading, listening to, or seeing on television or on your computers creating sort of a, a weird or uncomfortable feeling within you? Are you finding yourself not balanced anymore? Is it, is it kind of like, I don't want to read this, but I have to, because if I don't, I won't know what's going on? There's a trigger somewhere in there, right? If so, this is what I call toxic overload. You hate watching and listening to it, but oh my God, I might miss something. Or what is this elected official doing now? And you notice I'm not using any names. <laughs> so are we addicted or what? I mean, really, are we addicted to this stuff now? I find myself in the same position. When our New York Times subscription ran out last week, my husband and I seriously considered not having the paper delivered anymore. So we wouldn't have to be greeted every morning with more and more interesting points of view. <laughs> and saving money at the same time. What a great idea. Did we hold off? Nah, the crossword puzzles. <laughs> they were, the, they were the, the clincher. But so did the stories and the headlines and the news and the headlines again. When I started writing this sermon the other day, I was sitting at the kitchen table and I had the New York Times in front of me. The first thing, I wasn't reading it, it was just the, for the, the open front page. And the number of depressing, triggering, toxic news stories just on the front page were staring at me. And I looked at this and I'm thinking to myself, well, this is, this is a sermon just looking at the front page of the Times. And I felt myself beginning to react again, sighing and going to that place in myself of disbelief that was slightly sick, you know, maybe giving me a stomach ache, non-belief that this could still be going on, and number, numerous other thoughts that started the anger, the rage, the depression, and thinking, how much more can we stand? How much more can this go on? Oh, I can't believe this man did such a thing. Okay, so I have a, a, a big question for you. How much toxic overload can you take in a day? More than I'd like to take. Is more, has it been more than before last year? <laughs> is the only way I can put it. Are we finding, are you finding yourself sort of going into a place where you can't sort of escape it? And is it, a week's worth? Is it a month's worth? Is it changing who you are and how you're feeling about your life, your spiritual energy, your way of participating in your life? Is it sucking your energy? It's sucking mine. And you know I'm not only talking about what is being seen, heard, and written about on the various media. What about how you hold yourself, your energy in the world, at home, with your family, with your work, are you centered, open, and to use the vernacular with just initials, AGI, allowing God in? Are you? Take, take a second right now and just go inside. And can you say, to, say that you are centered at this moment? Are you open? <coughs> Are you allowing God in? Well, it's easy to allow God in in a place like this, especially with the fantastic music we've had this morning and the energy here. But can you stay in that place throughout your day? 
every day? What about at night when you go to bed? What are your dreams like these days or these nights? If any of you can say that you can be there at all the time, I want to know your secret. But what we can do every day, every hour, every minute, every second, is to hold on to the conscience and the consciousness of rebalancing. And it's almost like um, being on a, a balance board, you know, which is you for exercise sometimes. And if you're too much to one side, you're going to go like that. And if you're too much to the other side, you're going to fall off. How do you find that center balance for yourself? How do you rebalance yourself when these kind of thoughts, visions, pictures are all you see? Resetting ourselves to neutral and finding that place of centeredness, openness, and AGI where you can take a breath and remember where you are and remember who you are helps to find that place of resetting. How do you do that though? I mean, how do you actually do that? Each day, each moment, I have a simple suggestion. It's a mindfulness exercise. You guys all know what mindfulness is, right? Okay. How often do you practice mindfulness during the day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to do this with me. Close your eyes for a minute. Now take a moment and visualize yourself standing on the shore of the sea, barefoot at the edge where the waves come rushing up the sand and over your feet and your legs up to your knees. Feel the sand shifting under your feet from the undertow. The suck of the water pulls the sand out from under your feet. And you know you must reset your feet in the sand and rebalance yourself in order not to get swept off your footing and out to sea. To hold yourself stronger and more balanced in every part of yourself. So you reset your footing and bring yourself back into a slightly different place of body harmony to move with the shifting water and to stay on your feet as the tug of the undertow ebbs and flows. Okay, you can open your eyes. Could you all visualize that? Could you all feel it? This is a really good short mindfulness trick to do whenever you start feeling out of whack with everything and your body. It's really a resetting of your body-ness. <laughs> That's the only way I can put it. Your body-ness to a place where you are feeling more secure on the ground. And there's one more thing you have to do. You have to remember who you really are a child of the divine, a child of God, of goddess, of all that is, whatever your concept of the divine is, you are a child of that person, of that being. And nothing is going to take you away from that. And nothing is going to change about that unless you allow the anger and the fear and the craziness to take you over. So just for today, I do not allow myself to get sucked into the rhetoric, the news stories, the TV reporters, or the fear. I take back who I am and re-enter myself in the love of the divine and my connection to that feeling. I am in whole, I am whole and I am in oneness with the Father, God, the Mother God, and all that is in every moment. 
I'm going to repeat that. Just for today, I do not allow myself to get sucked into the rhetoric, the news stories, the TV reporters, or the fear. I take back who I am, and I recenter myself in the love of the divine and my connection to that feeling. I am whole. I am in oneness with Father God, Mother God, all that is at every moment. I fill myself with divine light and love. Nothing that is unlike good can touch me or have power. The trick is to remember to rebalance yourself every time you read a paper to listen to the, or listen to the news or walk by a television set or allow yourself to get triggered. And, you know, there's a lot of trigger-happy news these days. So staying centered in yourself and in the light of the divine is really the most important thing, most important thing, most important thing that you can do to hold yourself steady and not allow the toxic undertow or overload to take you out to sea. It's very long swim to get back. But if you can stay in the place where you don't have to swim and that you are centered and recentering your body at every moment and every time something happens, this will become a lot easier. So make a conscious decision not to allow the superficial static into your head. Release it and make a conscious decision not to connect to this today. Remember who you are at every minute, a child of light, a child of God, and nothing, nothing is stronger than that or has power over you, ever. So this is a short sermon, but very powerful today. And I leave you with this vision of hope by Oscar Motomura, director of Amana Key in Brazil. Thank you, God, for who I am. Thank you for you, for all living beings, for the love I feel that makes me live, that makes me live every moment of my life with great joy helping me bring joy to all that my life touches. <clears throat> Thank you, God, for the opportunities I have had every day to express the best that I have in me, for being able to be of service to every person I meet. Thank you, God, for the perfect peace I feel inside, tranquility, serenity, divine quietness. Thank you for everything I learn and from all I experience and all I create every day. Thank you, God, for inspiring me, for helping me create heaven on earth now and now and now. And in every moment I think, speak, or act. Thank you, God, for being who I am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is. Thank you.